When people see wildebeest, most think of a smaller version of a buffalo, curved horns lumbering about, and a more confident disposition less likely to run away at the first sight of danger. Those attributes tend to lend themselves well to hunting with the atlatl. Wildebeest are a species of African antelope, giving them impeccable eyesight, long strong legs, athletic and agile bodies, and a much spookier disposition. I had a rare opportunity to pursue these animals here in my home state of Florida. We make no bones about it that this is a hunt on a hunting ranch. While that may carry a certain stigma, we certainly figured out that putting a spear through one would be considerably more than fair chase hunting. The way I see it, I could fly all the way to Africa and hunt under the constant supervision of a PH or hunt over a water hole while hiding in a concrete or mud blind awaiting for the animals to come in. Or I could pursue these animals on foot, spot and stock, with one of the most difficult of hunting implements. Many people incorrectly think that all animals at a hunting ranch are domestic, tame farm animals. While some of those animals are found at most ranches, the vast majority of non-domesticated species are quite elusive and often tougher to hunt than in their native free-range habitat. It's up to the individual hunter to determine what is sufficiently challenging enough for them. You will notice that these wildebeest have linked up with a group of feral sheep and goats along with a lone Watusi calf. Since wildebeest are herd animals, finding safety in numbers, they linked up with this group of sheep and as we found out later, tended to use the sheep as a buffer between themselves and me. It's easy to see that the sheep are fairly docile so long as we aren't specifically harassing them. At times they allowed us to play it cool and work our way into 10 or 15 yards before getting too edgy. That is why we commonly recommend hunting feral sheep and goats to folks that are just starting in their primitive hunting journey. To cut their teeth on stalking, making a shot on a live animal, and testing the efficiency of their hunting gear. You will notice many occasions that we were in spearing distance of some of these handsome rams. The downside, of course, is while these rams didn't always want to flee, all the extra eyes, ears, and noses made it very difficult to make an approach on the wildebeest, which were not nearly as accepting of our presence. The wildebeest would catch sight or wind of us and take off on a couple hundred yard sprint. Despite spooking easily, they didn't like to be alone and would run circles until they could link back up with their adopted herd. We tried to use this to our advantage as I aggressively put myself between the wildebeest and the sheep. On one occasion, the beasts ran right in, oblivious to my presence, and found themselves surprised by a spear-wielding weirdo at about 20 yards. As you can see, they are far too fast and athletic to throw an atlatl at while looking at you. They are easily gone by the time the spear arrives. Gone. That was a good throw too. There were a couple of early opportunities that presented throws that yielded the same gone before the spear even got there result. If they're looking at you, you might as well forget about it. As expected, the more failed opportunities, the spookier the wildebeest grew. At this point, we had every expectation of going home empty-handed. Certainly a bow would make the opportunities a bit easier with a more concealed stock and shot. The atlatl simply requires an open ground stance and throw, making opportunities all the tougher, especially on animals fleet of foot with such a slow moving projectile. However, the goal was not simply to get a wildebeest, but rather to do it in a manner that would be exceptionally challenging. 
The following day I stalked into range with my bow and felt very comfortable in my ability to make the shot. But I decided that I wouldn't appreciate the experience with a bow the same way I would with the atlatl. Opportunities with the bow and arrow are far more common and certainly prove to be exceptionally challenging when hunting free range whitetails, spot and stock. Got that one, got that one. Just watch her go, she's going down. Or elk on public land in Idaho. Opportunities to legally hunt with the atlatl are mostly limited to hunting free range wild hogs in Florida or animals in a controlled hunting ranch such as this. While I love my bow and arrow hunts, hunting with the atlatl even in this manner has far more challenges to overcome. So I decided that I would continue with the atlatl or go home empty handed. The only way this would work would be to simply keep trying and hope that one would make a mistake and allow me to get a throw while not looking at me. The opportunity arrived to slip up behind this cabbage palm. As I sneak up behind this cabbage palm, I can see its feet, but it cannot see me. But you can see as I was already committed to the throwing motion when it began to run throwing off my aim and triggering that instinctual trying to lead it style of shot. Oh, that did not go good. Although fearing the worst, we began to search and quickly found that despite looking like a flesh wound high in the neck, it was bleeding profusely. We had hoped for a lucky hit to the carotid artery, but after several hundred yards of tracking, we knew that such a hit would have brought it down much faster. Despite the long distance it traveled, it was steadily losing blood, making the tracking job very easy. When we finally caught back up to it and jumped it, we could see where it had been standing and what looked like a quart of blood had leaked onto the ground. Despite the blood loss, it still had tremendous energy and tore off again. At this moment, I decided to make the tough decision to switch to the bow and arrow hoping to get a better shot for a faster recovery. At one point we were able to zoom in with the camera and it was clearly becoming more labored from the blood loss. The foreshaft of the atlatl was still in the neck, keeping the wound open and bleeding. We were able to see that the stone point had severed the main vein in the ear butt. Ears bleed a lot, but are generally not fatal unless the wound cannot close. If the foreshaft would pull out and the animal had time to rest, it would likely heal. Knowing this, we continued to push to keep the heart rate up and encourage more blood loss. A long shot was taken with the bow and unfortunately missed just low and the chase was still on. We eventually tracked it until it reconnected with its adopted herd. By this time it was certainly more labored and I was able to sneak in for a closer shot. Knowing it would run, I couldn't maneuver for a perfect lung shot, so an arrow was sent a little further back into the liver. Despite the hits, you can still see its incredible strength and stamina. However, this shot ultimately slowed it down, and finishing shots were taken with the atlatl. Some animals lend themselves more to being hunted with this ancient implement. That is clearly seen throughout the archaeological record with the multiple kill sites of megafauna with the atlatl. It is also easy to see how more athletic animals across the globe 
ultimately led to the development of the bow and arrow with much faster flying projectiles able to be launched from more concealed locations with considerably less movement. While I'm glad to ultimately get a spear into a wildebeest and bring home some great meat to the family, the bow and arrow is certainly more efficient for hunting faster animals requiring more precise shots and relying less on Lucky Hail Mary style of hits. As many hunters will tell you, some hunts and shots go perfectly resulting in quick, efficient kills. Others, many even taken with modern equipment such as compound bows and rifles still result in bad or wounding shots many of which go unrecovered each year. Such is the reality of hunting with any weapon system. So while this was not one of my cleaner hunts, tenacity and determination ultimately prevailed. And we caught a glimpse of tracking and persistence hunting of a wounded animal as likely seen countless times in the ancient world. While some may view this as unethical or cruel, it is also important to remember that death by hyenas, lions, or crocodiles, ripping it apart and eating it while it is still alive, is simply the way of nature. Early man was just another predator on the plains, and more times than not often provided a more peaceful death than that which comes by tooth and claw.